Now let's see. After much pressure from an exhaustive process and a hostile press, Boris Johnson has managed to agree a deal which might just meet the needs of the United Kingdom and the European Union both. The response from the EU is surprisingly positive, and from what I've read of the deal, it seems fair. Neither side got everything that they wanted, and that's typical for most international deals when they are negotiated between sides who consider each other to be equals. The next step is to get it approved by Commons, and that's where I have a few roasted opinions. So quickly, let's rehash this. David Cameron set out a referendum in order to strengthen his negotiating position with the EU by showing that the UK wanted to remain in the EU. That backfired spectacularly, resulting in Cameron's resignation in favor of Theresa May. May had the glad hand in common still, though. All that she had to do with her majority government was to push through the bills, honoring the referendum exactly as she promised. Instead, she kept taking the temperature of the commons, and when it looked as if resistance to the deal which she had negotiated would become insurmountable, she called a snap election. That also backfired, costing the conservatives their majority government and leading to a series of crushing defeats when she tried to get her deal approved. So, May also resigned in favor of Boris Johnson. Johnson is a hardline Brexiteer. He would just as easily leave the EU without a deal as with. Still, he knew that he needed to get a deal to get Brexit done with the mounting resistance in Commons. So he negotiated a better deal even as opposition in Commons lined up to hamstring him in every way possible. Enter the Ben Act, the latest in a series of legislation passed in Parliament to dictate to the government how to handle Brexit. The Ben Act requires Johnson to ask for an extension if no deal is agreed in Commons. This is a continuation of previous measures in which Commons has effectively made it illegal to leave the EU without a deal, although they also will not accept the deals that have been laid before them. So the House of Commons seems to think that the default position that the UK occupies regarding Brexit is remain. Um, no. Just no. The default position, thanks to the referendum and the Article 50 letter, is leave. Deal or no deal while Commons has dithered and bickered about if and how Brexit should happen, the hours which they have to agree to a deal slip away from them. The opposition seems to believe that they can simply delay everything until Brexit doesn't happen. Remember, though, that default position, legally speaking, is leave. That is simply a statement of fact. Without action by Commons, the UK will crash out of the EU on no-deal terms. The very thing which is de jure barred from happening will happen anyway without a deal agreed. Johnson brings forward his deal for a vote, and an amendment is immediately passed instead, requiring the government to pass all associated legislation for the deal before they will vote on the deal. The only vote which has to be taken before October 31st is now delayed for three months. It's like a homeowner facing foreclosure attempting to delay the foreclosure sale at the end of the month by voting to address the overdue payments on the House three months after the auction will occur. And then the House of Commons did something absolutely smart in the continuation of the debate. They accepted the deal in principle on second reading. Now this is just a procedural vote, and it was immediately followed by another procedural vote in which the Commons rejected the timetable for the debate. Following the same foreclosure analogy, This is like the homeowner deciding that having two days to discuss how to save the home from foreclosure is not enough when foreclosure is only three days away. No, no, we need to talk about it for at least two weeks. It doesn't work that way, folks. It just doesn't. The House of Commons needs an extension to make this happen. That's why they passed the Ben Act and announced their intent to take the Prime Minister to court if he failed to comply with it. Unfortunately for them, the EU has already stated repeatedly that they would not grant another extension unless it was needed to allow for either an election or a second referendum. Johnson will not put forward a second referendum. Frankly, it's ridiculous to keep on demanding that the people vote on a measure until one gets the desired result. 
Johnson did propose an election, but under the Fixed Terms Parliament Act, he needs a supermajority that he simply doesn't have and won't get. Why? Because his government has suffered enough defeats and defections to make it a minority coalition government. If the opposition doesn't allow it, Johnson can win a vote to adjourn for lunch. And they don't want a general election now, even though they cannot form a coalition in order to form a government of their own. The polls are now firmly against most opposition parties, and a general election might see Johnson leading a majority government once again. Just in time to get Brexit done, like he promised. That is, if the EU grants an extension. Commons needs to read the writing on the wall. There is no more time to waste. Brexit needs to be completed before the economic turmoil it is causing triggers a full-on global recession. The European bond markets are selling bonds with negative yields, including benchmark bonds like the 10-year Bund. Global commerce is slowing down, and it's not just from the trade war between the U.S. and China. Someone needs to send some solvent to Westminster so that they can soften the glue and get the MPs off of their bums and back to doing the work of their constituents instead of posturing for political gain.